Okay, this is the Aaron Media Chaff gear. Rides in the middle of the transfer case. Um, what you want to look for here is check all of your teeth along the edges, see if there's any pits from rusting. You also want to look for any chipped teeth where things have gotten caught in them. Um, check all that, make sure there's no uneven wear. Check your bearing riding, uh, your washer riding surface, and then you want to check the inside surface to make our surface to make sure that there's no gouges or grooves in there. If you're feeling a ridge inside there, then uh, you may want to be seeing about getting a new one. Otherwise, if it looks like this one, um, you're probably in great shape. Go ahead and reuse it. Okay, the part we're looking at now is the output shaft. What you want to look for on your output shaft is you want to look for any damage along these milled in grooves because they're pretty important. Okay, you're looking for damage along there. See this hole here? You want to make sure that this hole is cleared so that oil can flow through the bushing in the end. Okay. You want to make sure that this surface area right here on the shaft is not damaged because what happens, what rides there is this gear, this is your output shaft gear, okay, and it spins on here, all right. As long as the transfer case is in neutral and the vehicle is moving, you will have that motion right there. You'll have that gear spinning on that shaft. What will happen is in the event, say you tow the vehicle, flat tow it, and you're low on oil. If you don't have oil, if this area isn't submerged in oil, or at least half of it submerged in oil, what's going to happen is as that rides on that shaft, it's going to melt it down. And you can actually weld those two together. All right, so you want to look and inspect this area real good. Make sure there's no damage there. Okay, you want to check these for any places where it's going to catch or bind because here's your output shaft sliding gear. It's going to go on here and it should slide nicely. Well, that first gear that we had, when we put that on, those two, when they slide together, they lock. Okay. So you want to make sure that everything here is free-flowing free, free and free-moving so that they will attach to each other. All right? So all this should be good. This surface area, this area back here, you're going to have a bearing pressed on back here, and you want to make sure that it's nice and snug and that there's no damage here. All right? Last thing you want to check is your threads here. Make sure they're not damaged. Actually, it's not the last thing. The last thing is going to be this bushing in the end here that we talked about, making sure it was clear, make sure the hole is clear, and make sure the bushing itself, this part is going to ride inside there. It should be a nice snug fit. I mean, it's not going to, yet yeah, not to where you have to force it in. It should readily spin in there, but it shouldn't be very loose falling all over. If so, you have to change that bushing. Otherwise, you could probably leave the bushing alone. Most people end up leaving it alone. All right, that's your output shaft gear. Sorry, output shaft. This is your output shaft gear. We just talked about it. You want to look at the insides of it. Make sure that there's no spalling, no cuts or grunds. Make sure that there's no pitting in along the teeth. Make sure none of these teeth are sheared off. Basically, you're looking for a gear that's going to look like this one. This is a very nice output shaft gear. This is your output shaft sliding gear. You're going to look for the same thing on it. Make sure there's no damage along the teeth. Make sure that everything looks good. Okay, make sure inside here all these are good. There's no sharp edges, nothing that can grind. Where this gear fits onto here, you'll also have this washer. Make sure this washer isn't damaged. Because this washer, if you look on your output shaft, you'll have one groove on each side that's longer than the rest. That's what this washer fits down into. Make sure it goes down and fits in there snugly because what's going to happen, this gear will go on 
then this washer will fit down in there and if it can't fit down inside those grooves then it's not going to and you won't be able to install the snap ring there's a snap ring that goes right here okay so make sure that that washer fits on there properly it goes into the grooves okay let's take a little bit of time here to talk about the front of this assembly and see how it works all right what we're looking at is this is your clutch fork this is your clutch gear for a lot of people they'll call that your four-wheel drive gear because that's what locks you in and out okay this is your shaft for that all right this shaft goes into that bushing in the end of the shaft all right now when this gear slides forward it locks you into four-wheel drive all right it actually locks in the front wheel drive all right if you look your shift fork here goes there and these detent balls right here are what allow you to go into front uh, two-wheel drive four-wheel drive high and low this is where that lock interlock pin gets into these and keeps it from going all right so when you're in this position right here that's got you locked into four-wheel drive and that allow you to go high and low okay that also will prevent you from going two-wheel drive low all right so that's what these are for all right this shaft inspect it make sure that it's not worn on this end here and that it will fit nice and snugly into that bushing on the end of the shaft which it does make sure that it interlocks nicely with this gear which it does okay so the rest of this that and if you've got all of that all these pieces together that's going to take care of your front wheel drive portion of your four wheel drive unit okay this is your speedometer cable driven gear uh, sorry drive gear it slides onto the shaft here the longer boss end over here fits up against the gear all right this is your speedometer cable driven gear it's going to fit in there like this and as that turns it will slowly turn that gear all right now that will fit up inside here like so sorry got it backwards up inside here like so and then your speedometer cable will screw onto the end here now all of this fits inside this rear bearing cap if you look inside the rear bearing cap right here you'll see yeah, there you go right there you can see it there's a bushing down inside there all right now in the event that that bushing is bad the way to change it is to get a shaft a rod preferably brass could, could use steel though or even wood will work you get a shaft the size of the hole in that sh in that bushing and pack the bushing full of grease and then drive the shaft down into it the hydraulic pressure of driving the shaft in the center will force the bushing out from the outside edge however in 99.9% .9 of the cases that bushing is perfectly good and has no damage to it and does not need to be changed the way to tell that is you can take your speedometer gear slip it down in there put it in the hole and see if it wobbles around inside there if it fits snugly into that bushing like this one does there's no reason to change that okay now it'll all fit down inside there like so and your gear should spin freely without having a lot of play these are your two shift rails with the shift forks installed the small one like this one is going to fit onto this gear that we looked at earlier okay it fits down inside here see how snugly that fits okay it shouldn't be a whole lot of rocking and playing it should fit pretty snug right like it is okay this rod as it shifts this rail as it shifts in and out of the shift housing right here goes like so 
all right? It will shift that rod in and out, all right? That's its purpose. So, you're going to look at the shift fork, make sure the fork's in good shape, make sure that it can be tightened to the rail properly, check the rail, make sure that the rail doesn't have any heavy pitting, actually even some pretty substantial hit pitting will still be okay on this thing. So just polish it up as best you can, and uh, make sure you don't have any really sharp edges like this one right here. I still need to take this one down. It's got a sharp edge right there that can catch. Um, but take all that down and make it so that it's not going to cut up those brand new seals that you're going to install right here. Okay, This should be able to freely slide in and out of that seal without damaging it. All right. All right, this is your other shift rail. Okay, this is the large one that goes on your output shaft sliding gear. All right. It's going to go on this one so it slides in and out here. Okay, it should also be a fairly snug fit. You'll find that if you are familiar with the Model 8, uh, sorry, with the T90 transmission, you'll see that there's a fair amount of slop in a lot of those shift forks. You don't get anywhere near that much slop in the Model 18 transfer case. It's a much more snug fit. All right. So, and, but even if you got a fair amount, it's not going to make that much difference because these gears are very, very positive locking gears. There's room for play there. It's not going to be jumping in and out of a high and low like the T90 tends to jump out of second gear. So these should be fine. Um, that's how it fits. Again, Check it. Make sure there's no burrs, nothing that's going to cut anything up. Make sure that all the surfaces are going to ride against your seal are in good shape. Like this one. And make sure when everything is nice and tight, which it isn't yet for this one, this is still loose. Um, once this is all tightened down nice, that has to be safety wired down. Okay, we're coming down into the home stretch now. You remember this part. This is what locks you in and out of front wheel drive. Okay. Remember that this piece went over here like so to lock us in and out. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to check the fit of this shaft on the companion flange for the front. And again, that's going to be a very snug fit. Okay? Shouldn't be as snug as this one is. I got a little cleaning up left to do on this one. Okay? Again, never dry, hammer on any of these parts with anything except a brass or wooden dowel. Okay, so you notice on the end of there that it didn't want to fit inside there, so these need to be cleaned up. I haven't run them on the wire wheel or anything yet, so we're going to clean those up. we got to clean them up inside here, make sure that they fit well. There should be this washer that fits inside here, like so. A lot of people think when they get this companion flange, that that's the way it's made because that thing is glued in there with a ton of grease and old dirt and everything else. No, that thing's going to pop out of there. You can clean it up, get it all cleaned out, get all the junk out of there, get it back together, and then onto there, onto the end of this shaft is going to be your nut. Okay, which will go through there once this is cleaned up. The last piece that we've got here that is not something that's going to be replaced is going to be the intermediate shaft locking plate. It just fits into this groove on the intermediate shaft, locking it into place. Bolts into the back of the transfer case. All right. If you've got all these pieces and you've inspected them and all is good and everything else you've ordered replacements for and gotten, you're ready to assemble the Model 18 transfer case.